Okay, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, retail has a lot of impact on the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, such as uh, Sustainable Development Goal 8, Decent Work and Economic Growth. Also, uh, uh, SDG 11, Sustainable Cities and Communities. Uh, SDG 11, Responsible Consumption and Production. And of course, uh, SDG 13, Climate Action. The COVID outbreak um, has hit uh, the retail industry. And uh, will retail and logistics being reinvented? or were the past uh, months just a ripple in the time. Uh, E-commerce was uh, exper experiencing uh, good, good times um, and things were pretty bad for the phys physical shopping uh, centers. And will the ugly warehouses be the green swans of the future? Uh, welcome to the session Reinventing Retail, the good, the bad and the ugly. My name is Menno Lammers. I'm the Quartermaster and founder of PropTech for Good and also the founder of PropTech NL. And PropTech for Good is an alliance uh, which propels PropTech forward to contribute to the United Sustainable Development Goals. By empowering the alliance, we are experiencing the endless human possibility. This enables us to create future-proof environments for everyone. I would like to introduce you to, the, to our panelists, uh, Robert Hekelaar. He's the Vice President, IT, Architecture and Emerging Technologies, and uh, Christian Kimmel, Head of Sales Operations at Channels. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Let's, uh, let's start. Um, what, um, uh, Christian, I, 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 I'm starting with you. You're, you're from, uh, from Channels. Can you tell us what Channels is? What is, what is it about and um, what did you see is happening in the past months? Yeah, thank you for the introduction, uh, Menno. Um, so yeah, my name is uh, Christian, I'm from uh, Channels. Channels is a, a tenant engagement platform, actually a tenant full service engagement platform that uh, stimulates the tenant and landlord relationship. Uh, we uh, mainly focus on retail uh, real estate now have over 250 uh, communities uh, within real estate assets uh, where we provide clear structured communication and um, provide digital services as well like turnover report and maintenance ticketing and all kinds of other uh, integrations are, are possible and of course yeah as we are um, mainly active in the retail real estate or our customers are active there of course and we provide them with a a nice tool to communicate and uh, digitize processes. Yeah, we saw an, an, an incredible increase in traffic on our platform from March until June. Uh, it was like 400%. Uh, and of course, the, uh, the retail um, uh, sector was, was hit hard and there was a lot of panic uh, there. So all kinds of new uh, questions arose, opening hours, health and safety, which have never uh, played a part before. And that made clear that there is a really big urgency in uh, collaboration and clear com communication within this uh, real estate uh, relationship between the tenant and the landlord. Uh, on the other side, of course, the consumer uh, who is looking for convenience, uh, wearing a mask, uh, health and safety issues, all made that the retail sector and the food and beverage sector, of course, as we know, uh, were quite hit quite hard. So, um, yeah, that was, if you look at the European uh, yeah, business market in general, 25% uh, of all businesses are retail or wholesale uh, companies, and of those, 90% are smaller businesses. So, uh, of course, my colleague Robert will explain a little bit more about the online um, uh, channel uh, is a big substitute for the physical retail and smaller companies just don't have the means or knowledge to uh, to reinvent themselves okay but uh, a lot of communication and increase and uh, yeah it's, it's safety is of course is a big uh, big topic uh, at the moment and it's uh, it will be uh, uh, for the next uh, next time uh, next period i uh, i expect too yeah. Uh, Robert, can you share us what Prologis is all about and uh, what did you um, see 
in the last, uh, yeah, in the previous months? Sure. Um, thanks, Mano. Yeah, I think most of uh, you know, know Prologis. We're the biggest um, yeah, real estate uh, provider of logistics uh, real estate. So we own the warehouses and uh, people will actually rent space uh, from us, very simply said. Um, we don't only own them, we build them, we develop them, we do pro property management, so we do all of it. Um, so uh, yeah, we saw, we saw a lot of things happening the last uh, month, actually since COVID happened. Uh, in the beginning, obviously, as any company, we um, we stepped on the brake in in developments, and uh, we just needed to figure out, you know, what was about to happen. Um, this is an event that did not happen before, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we, of course, there is experience in in crisis and all the things, but this was different. You know, economy suddenly had stopped, yeah. um, but we very very fast we saw that um, since. Uh, things shifted actually to our benefit in that sense uh, because e-commerce you know took like extreme big jump um, you have to think that you know normally uh, e-commerce was uh, people like like you and me like the, the let's say that people um, until like 40 or 50 years old they they order things online but suddenly you had like a very big group added to that group that didn't didn't uh, they were not possible to go to the shops anymore. They couldn't they couldn't buy things anymore, etc. So they actually jumped into the e-commerce space as well and started to order things. So that that spiked uh, orders. So that that put a lot of pressure on the on the whole logistics sector, a whole supply chain. Um, so we saw a lot of pressure actually uh, within our customers, pressure to add more space, pressure to store goods as 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 good as possible, as fast as possible. Make sure that the turnaround was extremely fast. You know, things were going in, but were going out as fast as possible. And then you had the other sector, you know, the retail sector, that were not able to sell anything anymore. Yeah. So the things that normally were throughput, you know, put into into the shops uh, at a certain time in in that uh, specific year, could not be put in the store anymore because things were not sold so uh, a lot of storage issues and challenges on that side as well so from our perspective um yeah for us covid is not was not that bad we saw we saw some trends actually accelerating uh, mm -hmm. during covid and i can second you know and that, that that the safety part is extremely has been become extremely important and one other thing um um and it goes quite hand in hand with that is um, employee well-being in in the warehouses uh, became extremely important as well. So because there was a lot of pressure, so the employee safety uh, is extremely important, but also the employee well-being, since you know you had so many things to do in the warehouse, you had to make sure that you had enough people actually uh, working in the warehouses. So yeah, you, you have to make sure that you have a good working environment for these people. That is one thing that that grew. And what we're seeing now as well is people start to realize that uh, automation is is more and more important as well. You can't do anything with with the people that you have in the warehouses. So make sure that you you have a good automation plan. Make sure that you equip the warehouses the right way. Make sure that you have your infrastructure up to date in order to start automating more and more. So that if you have suddenly have like a lack of of people uh, uh, working in your warehouse, that you can actually still comply to the demand that was so increasing yeah yeah it's 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 really interesting to experience and to hear your story from the more the physical one and uh, and then provided by a platform and communication and the physical one with the warehouses but that's the e-commerce side and and that's so totally different things uh but also going hand in hand in that way so it's it's um it's very interesting to see and to hear uh, to hear that, um, Christian. When 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 you hear the story of uh, Robert, and when you also look at at the platform and the communication, what did you see? Because in Europe, we yeah the, the whole regulations rules getting more open, people get more uh, space to walk around and do their things in, I think in July. 
what happened till now? What and, and what do you expect? Do you see several trends? And do you recognize the story of Robert, of course? Um, yeah, one thing that, that overlaps uh, is the um, employee well-being. Of course, the personnel within the shops, um, maybe even more than within a logistical center or an asset, uh, they, they come in contact with a lot more people who are maybe infected or there is an, a fear of uh, getting infected, not only from the consumers, but also the personnel, uh, of course. Um, but yeah, it's of course, a, a, a talks about the COVID crisis and within the physical retail are negative and it is um, not to forget that physical retail was already struggling or some formulas that were already struggling, of course, and the non omni channel approach um, was actually the, the low hanging fruit to, to solve the problem for a lot of retailers. Uh, but what you see now, and even what I experienced here in my uh, neighborhood here in, uh, in Rotterdam is um, because uh, consumers weren't as mobile uh, as they were before, working from home, couldn't go out, the lockdown, couldn't go out to eat, um, people were more focused on the local uh, shopping centers, uh, which we have a lot of in the Netherlands. So you see some more specialized uh, retailers who thrived, or some food and beverage uh, companies uh, who thrived a little bit more. Uh, maybe that will be a trend that continues because people will continue working from home more mm -hmm. and will maybe create a shift within uh, uh, yeah, consumer behavior uh, looking at that. Yeah. yeah. So the catchment area, uh, if it was small, uh, the value went down, but now what will it do in the future? If the yeah. catchment area is small, will that be a plus or a, ne or a negative? Uh, yeah. What, what, what's the challenge for you for, uh, uh, from your role in, or especially in a company, for the company as channels? What, what do you expect? What, what are you going to, to work on because of this situation and also the trends uh, we talked about? Yeah, um, yeah, one of the things there, of course, also uh, mall operators and uh, real estate owners are, are ha having to answer new questions and have to attack new challenges. Like um, at first we want to get as many people into our malls and shopping destinations as possible. And now there's a maximum, maximum all of a sudden. So like I said before with channels, we not only provide communication, but also integrate with systems. So footfall is one of them. So uh, one of the things on our agenda is an occupancy feature, which shows uh, parts of a, a shopping center which are uh, too crowded at one point which sends out the notification also due to uh, our that stimulates of course uh, health and safety uh, not only for employees but also for consumers yeah. so yeah that's, that's a whole new way of thinking and um, everything has to done, be uh, done remotely uh, now so um, but first off in the peak of the crisis we got a lot of questions about communication so yeah. there were a lot of uh, uh, rumors about measures, a lot of rumors about the dangers uh, which created fear. So clear communication from the uh, authority that knows what should be done. So the owner, the mall operator, uh, there was a big urgency for that. And uh, yeah, luckily we could provide our customers with that option. Yeah, great. And we'll continue to uh, develop that, of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Robert, how, how is it for you? What did you saw after, for example, July till now? And what do you uh, expect? Uh, and what, what, yeah, what are you working on? So now currently I'm, I'm responsible for innovation. So for, for like development of the warehouses and finding out what things can we put in the warehouses to help our customers in a better way. Yeah. And um, during the last month, we get more and more the question uh, or actually the, the comment or oh, if we would have more data, then we could have, you know, measured so many things. Mm -hmm. So warehouse utilization is extremely important. You know, how, how good is your throughput? How, how uh, well are you actually uh, utilizing your warehouse um, during a specific uh, uh, time? Um, the more you can put in the warehouse, the more you can sell, obviously, and every square meter is just money in that sense. Yeah. So, um, uh, we were already developing our, our smart building and we're, we're going to focus even more on that. The other side is we see now you know, customers are moving even faster towards automation and automation needs um, 
a different kind of structure, a different kind of building in that sense. So what we're as a landlord trying to do now is figuring out, okay, what can we as a landlord already put in the warehouse as a standard so that when the customers come in, they don't need to, to wire like a few kilometers uh, throughout the warehouse and spend a few months of, of preparation before they can go live. These one, most of the times our customers want to come in and go live. So we're now, we're now putting in a, a basic infrastructure in our new developments, uh, an infrastructure that they can actually just plug into and, and can go. So, uh, and on the other side, we're doing a lot with IOT, IoT, Internet of Things, measuring things that are happening in the warehouse in mm -hmm. order to give our customers, you know, a valuable data stream, uh, valuable information where they can actually draw conclusions from. So it's for us, the focus is, is, is more and more about data and about helping our customers to, to utilize our properties in a, yeah, the most optimum way. So it will be more smart, healthy because of the employee sa safety uh, and sustainable building. Probably you also uh, providing the whole sustainability green. Yeah, I, I saw, I, I said it in my introduction. Eh? Could it be the green swans? Um, uh, your your colleague uh, uh, wrote a great piece of content about it. The yeah, green yeah. swans, the exponential um, positive impact uh, in the in the in the environment. Um, what, no, what yeah, that's true. We're, yeah, no, we're 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 focusing on that big time, and we're in the. I believe we're in the top. 30 or something of, of most sustainable companies in the world. Um, we're focusing a lot on, of, of course, solar energy. You know, we have the roofs. So why not, why not put like solar panels on all these roofs? So we're already doing that, that for quite some years. Um, but on the other side, you know, you can also do a lot of insight in the, uh, in the warehouse from a sustainability perspective. So yes, employee well-being, but also the, 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 the wiring that we're putting now in the warehouse. Normally, the customer needs to put it in when lease start, needs to take it out when lease end. Then the next customer comes in, needs to put it in, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that is so incredibly unsustainable and you throw away so many equipments. This is just a, a, a very small example. Um, but we're trying to think in everything what we do, you know, how can we be, be most sustainable? Also providing the, a lot of data about, you know, dock utilization and warehouse utilization. What if we can help our customers a little bit, because the customers most of the time do it most, most of the things themselves, but what, what, if they can reduce truck uh, kilometers uh, a little bit, if they can optimize to truck well, dwell times that the truck are you know, standing uh, at our warehouse doing nothing, all these little things, if we can help them with providing the right data to optimize the whole supply chain, will also, you know, sustainability will also benefit from that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's uh, also a future perspective in that way. And that's also uh, my last question. Um, um, how can we create an uh, inclusive, sustainable and future-proof real and logistics environment in that way? Uh, uh, Christian, can you, uh, what, what are your thoughts? What are your, we don't have a glass gulp, of course, but uh, maybe you have some, uh, yeah, you, you know, things are going on. There are some trends. What, what do you see? What do you expect? Yeah, I think uh, yeah, a crystal ball, ball would be amazing. I would be rich now, I think, <laughs> and especially in these times, because there's a lot of uncertainty, I think. Uh, like I said, there are, uh, every month there are new measures, and uh, new um, uh, infection numbers uh, provided, and everybody's panicking again. Um, and so new questions uh, will arise. And I think one of the things uh, Robert mentioned is uh, data. Like I said, the occupancy numbers uh, within malls, um, gathering uh, more data remotely uh, and uh, not to be uh, upfront, but um, the real estate sector had some, uh, quite a, some ways to go um, looking at innovation, of course. Um, and looking at that, I think, um, together with a gathering of data, uh, which is really the, uh, yeah, the, the more number side of things and uh, reinventing business models. So how can we do uh, certain, uh, certain tasks within our malls or within our company more efficiently by doing them digitally? 
uh, I think also on the softer side, uh, collaboration and organization is needed, not only um, by the, the landlord, but also by the tenants and in between the tenants. I think uh, you see in the Netherlands and also in the UK, um, uh, business improvement districts where we was real estate and retailers together. So the tenant association and the real estate owners on the other side are uh, organized and, and create a budget to uh, make uh, or to make their place uh, great again for consumers, I think. And on the other side, uh, like I said before, uh, that smaller retailers don't have the means to innovate or to create an online channel. Uh, you see more and more the, the digital mall uh, where uh, you can order online from a, from a mall, the mall where you always go, but you can go, but you can order with your, uh, with your regular retailer where you buy your specialized items, uh, for example. So I think the future will tell. Uh, I think what we noticed uh, on our side is that a lot of uh, real estate uh, owners and managers are open to innovation and efficiency uh, also due to, of course, uh, uh, a tough quarter, not, lo not only for retail, but also for real estate. So um, I think the future will tell uh, of and uh, we will... Uh, we will move with our customers uh, yeah. towards the, well, the next future. Well, when, I, when I hear collaboration also from, uh, from Christian, uh, do you think, and that's my, also my last question uh, to you, um, do you think it makes sense to make a connection, for example, with the platform of channels and because then you have um, the customers, the, the real estate, the platform of communication, uh, and maybe more uh, uh, solutions, of course, and uh, logistics and warehouses. Could it make sense, do you think? So, so collaboration is the key word anyway. So if, if we want to optimize, we should work together. And if we want to optimize really well, then probably even competition should start to work together. Um, there are so many, so many challenges to solve, you know. Take, take a very simple one, uh, you see probably uh, a, a lot of uh, little vans, you know, driving through your uh, street every day, and uh, that's not that's not sustainable. You know, uh, it's it's annoying, and uh, now we have to we have to find a solution for that. And the only solution is to start collaborating in some smart way. Um, to come back to your answer on is is channels uh, yes as, uh, or your question is channels a solution? The funny thing is what we have developed now in uh, in in some regions we have parks for example in england and the ce in the netherlands a little bit less but we have developed something what we call park life and uh, that is that is a, an online online and and live community actually where we try to get our tenants a little bit more together mm -hmm. um and, and and where they can actually share uh, things and where we can actually offer them uh, shared solutions for example um uh, shared um uh, driving from and through work you know we can even offer them uh, offer them a, a car to actually start doing that or we share bikes uh, in 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 the park or we make sure that uh, once a week there is like a, a dentist coming around so that people they don't have time they can actually go to the dentist and and go back to work in a very easy manner so in that sense we're in the parks itself we're we're kind of doing that and of course channels is uh, on, a, on, a, on a different level but i think you know, these collaboration efforts are the future, yes. Yeah, awesome. It's great to, uh, to hear that uh, collaboration uh, will be the future. Um, I'm looking forward to build back better. And that's how they say it uh, in, uh, from the United Nations, also to work on the sustainable development goals. Uh, we have a lot of uh, challenges, we're facing that. Um, I. I assume we will get there uh, and especially when we stay uh, talking around and of course make from talking doing to uh, push things forward um, thank you for now uh, Robert for your for sharing your insights Christian thank you for sharing your insights for today um, thank you for joining uh, this session uh, feel free to reach out by our LinkedIn uh, profiles. Enjoy your day and uh, thank you for having us and enjoy the event.